In this video, I want to explore my top five new-ish features in Adobe Photoshop. Let's dive in. The first two tools that I want to look at have to do with removing distractions from your images. And these are retouching tools, which means by default, they are destructive to your original image information. Now we're coming from Lightroom, so we're working on a copy anyway. But what I like to do usually with any sort of retouching tool is start by duplicating my background layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my background layer over here on the right. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to duplicate. Now there's about 50 ways you can do this. This isn't the best way by any stretch of the imagination but it works great. We're gonna go ahead and click OK, and that's gonna give us a safe background copy to work on. From here, I'm gonna grab the Remove tool, which is the little Band-Aid with the stars on top of it. The keyboard shortcut is J, although there are other tools with J as well, so you may have to go Shift J to find the right one. But we're looking for the Remove tool. Now, once we're in the Remove tool, up here in the top in the Options bar, there's an option for Find Distractions. And you can see the two tools we're gonna to talk about are Wires and Cables and People. So what I'm gonna do is click on people and it's actually gonna search through the image and try to find any people that are not the subject, what it thinks are not the subject. And we can see here it found a, a couple people back there. All we have to do from here is just click the check mark to say yes, that is what I wanna remove and we let Photoshop work its magic. And there we are, pretty amazing. Let me go ahead and zoom in. We'll go, I'll use uh, Command plus or Control plus to zoom in and we'll zoom over here. And you can see if I turn the eyeball on the background copy on and off to see that layer, we can see that here's our before and here's our after. So not only did it remove the people, it actually made that plant, the leaf on that plant, bigger to cover where the people used to be. Now, I will say results may vary, right? Try this on your own photos and see. Pretty amazing for only three clicks, right? All we had to do was duplicate our background, grab the remove tool, and then come up to find distractions and select people. The next tool is wires and cables, and I use this for power lines. Now, this is a very simple power line example. We'll run a more complex example in a minute, but again, I wanna start the same way. I'm gonna right click on my background, I'm gonna duplicate that layer and click OK, and then I'm working on the background copy. From there, I'm gonna grab the Remove tool, I'm gonna go up to Find Distractions, and I'm gonna select Wires and Cables. And this is gonna do very similar to the people, except it's gonna automatically remove any power lines that it finds in the shot. And you can see just like that, if I turn the eyeball on and off, it completely removed that power line. And even if I zoom in, there's no remnant of it left over. It did a very clean job even rebuilding the tree over here. You can see it built back the tree information very cleanly. So really cool for a quick power line removal. And here's a much more complex example. Again, I'm gonna go to find distractions, wires and cables, and let it think. All right, and here is the result. We can zoom in and you can see it did a very clean job on the wires and cables, right? I can turn on and off that background copy and see there's the before, there's the after. The thing it doesn't do is remove the actual power poles, right? And that's uh, kind of what I've experienced across the board as I'm testing this tool. Um, power poles stay around. Same with these little yellow insulators that are down near the ground. Those also seem to stay. So sometimes you'll have like a couple of those floating up and down, but there are tons of other tools to take care of that even inside of Lightroom uh, that are gonna make quick work of those things. Honestly, having the power lines removed that quick and easy, as far as time is concerned, that's the part that takes the longest. Longest. So you can see again before and after. The next tool I want to look at that is not new by any stretch of the imagination, but it has gotten a lot better is object selection. Now in this photo here, I actually wanted to move my arm a little bit higher up. I feel like my arm is too close to this NAS down here and I want to move it. So in order to do that, I'm going to need to select my arm. Now in the past, this would have been a job for maybe the quick selection tool, but it would have had a hard time where my arm gets blurry against the background. It wouldn't have been super smooth. These days though, the fourth tool down by default in the toolbar is the object select. And it actually lives with quick select and the magic wand. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab object select. And then whenever I grab a new tool inside of Photoshop, I usually look up here at the options bar to make sure everything is configured the way that I want it. And the only thing I'm gonna change here is where it says mode, I'm gonna change this to lasso. What this means is I can kind of give Photoshop a rough idea of where I want it to select, and then it will use its fancy magic to get a perfect selection in that area. So I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag with the little lasso object selection tool roughly around what I'm trying to select, in this case, my arm. 
So we'll come back here, I'll let go, and then it'll think for a second, and you can notice it snaps in, right? It figures out what it is I actually wanted. And I can say that this has almost completely replaced the other selection tools that I used to use. Is it perfect? No, but it's really good. And for a quick edit, for a quick change you're trying to make, it does a fantastic job. Now what I wanna do here is move my arm up, and this is gonna lead us to another tool as well. What I'm gonna do first is I wanna get my arm and the camera onto its own layer. So what I'm gonna do is go to Layer, New, Layer via Copy. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna take the selected area, in this case my arm with the camera, and it's going to cut it out onto its own layer. We can see here layer one. So I have the background, which is the normal photo, and then I have layer one, which if I turn off the eyeball on the background, we can see is just my arm holding the camera. So I've kind of cut it out, and what's really cool here is if I grab the move tool, I can actually move my arm around, right? You can see, there it is. Now, obviously, my other arm is still there, so we haven't solved that problem yet, but we can move my arm, so step one is complete. And again, object select makes it so easy to get to this point. Next one I'm gonna do is turn off layer one so that it's not visible anymore. I'm gonna turn off the eyeball, and I'm gonna click on the background. And essentially, if I wanna move my arm up, I need to see blank wall behind my arm, not my arm. I don't want my arm behind my arm. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be clicked on the background, and I wanna basically tell Photoshop to fill this area with my arm with blank wall. Essentially, get rid of my arm. And this is where another tool comes in. What we wanna use now is a tool called the Selection Brush. And this tool actually lives with the lasso tools. So where the magnetic lasso, the polygonal lasso, and the normal lasso live, there's a new one called the Selection Brush. And you can operate this one of two ways. You can use a bigger brush. I can use the bracket keys on my keyboard to control my brush size. And I could just paint really big over top of what I wanna remove, right? Or if I go ahead and go Command or Control Z to undo, I could also use a really small brush and treat it like a lasso tool, where I could come around here like this and encircle what I'm trying to select like this. And as long as I come back to where I started, it will actually fill that whole area in. So kind of nice, it can work either way. And I've found myself using this selection brush more than the lasso tool because it can work either way, which is kind of nice. Um, in this case, I'd probably just go with a big brush. I think it's a little bit quicker to just brush over my arm like this versus having to come all the way around. So once we have this selection active, it's time to essentially remove my arm and the camera because again, we have it floating on a separate layer. So what I'm gonna do is on this little contextual taskbar right here, and if you don't see a contextual taskbar floating around, you can go up to window, contextual taskbar. Yes, I said it three times in a row without messing up. And we're gonna use the generative fill button on the contextual taskbar. So I'm gonna click on that, and it's gonna ask me to give it a prompt. I, I don't need to, I'm just gonna go ahead and click generate. And that's gonna fill this region in with whatever Adobe, whatever Photoshop thinks should go there instead. And we'll see how good of a job it does. All right, you can see it's all finished up and it rebuilt the gradient back here really well, right? You can see how clean that is. If I turn on and off that generative fill layer, here's the before and here's the after. So now my arm has gone away and now I can turn on my arm that's on its own layer and I can move it around. So I can grab that move tool and I can reposition, put this arm wherever I want it to go. I wanted it a little bit higher. And just like that, we've went from this original photo, right, where we have the arm lower to a different photo where we have it higher. Now, are there other ways to do it? Sure, but I wanted to highlight the new tools. In my mind, object select is awesome. And then also the actual selection brush tool has saved a lot of time for me as well. All right, so there are four of my favorite tools, but I've saved the best for last. The tool I wanna look at next is reflection removal. And this does a very similar thing to what a polarizing filter will do with window reflections. Now the reflection removal tool is actually part of Camera Raw, not part of Photoshop. So we wanna get our photo opened up into Camera Raw. Now you can do this with a smart object if you want to, but I've had trouble getting my smart objects from Lightroom into Photoshop and being able to use the reflection removal tool. So what I did was I actually just exported the raw file to my desktop, and I'm gonna open that directly into Photoshop. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my raw file here on my desktop, I'm gonna right click, go to open with, and I'm gonna open it into Photoshop, which is then gonna open it into Camera Raw. 
Now, once we're here, we're actually gonna need to change a preference. So you're gonna wanna go to the little gear in the upper right-hand corner, come down to technology previews, and be sure that new AI features and settings panel is enabled. Once you enable that, you will have to quit Camera Raw and quit Photoshop and then reopen in order for these checkboxes to become available. Now, once you're there, I'm gonna go over to the eraser tool over here or the remove tool on the right. I'm gonna come down to reflections and I'm gonna expand that out and I'm gonna put a checkbox next to apply reflections. And we'll let the computer think for a second and see what it comes up with. And you can see it's done an amazing job. Now, is it perfect? No, I can still see some of the tree here in the background, but overall it gives us a little slider and we can actually go back to zero, right? We can see kind of before reflection removal and then after reflection removal. And then you can even go the opposite direction and see the reflection that it was able to identify when shooting the photo. So kind of amazing technology to be able to go from like, wow, that's actually what the window was reflecting all the way to a reflection free image. Pretty powerful stuff. Overall, this has been one of my favorite new features and it honestly allowed me to take a second look at a lot of photos that I had written off as having too much reflection and now I can remove it very quickly and easily. All right, everybody. So those are my top five newish features inside of Adobe Photoshop. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you kind of see the value of these tools. If you're not a regular Photoshop user, I recommend you dive in and see what's possible. If you all like this video, drop a like down below, hit subscribe to stay up to date with future videos and let me know in the comments if you have any questions and moreover, what's your favorite new tool in Photoshop? I'd love to hear from all of you and I hope to see you in a future video.